this is like chocolate milk level. Yeah. With a little bit of. <sighs> Wow. Cool. Is our cowler in there? Oh. <laughs> um, it's something in, but it's really good. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Legends and Libations with Ozark Researchers of the Beyond. I'm Kylie and this is Lindsay. And Lindsay's gonna be telling us about the Ozark Howler quick like because I want to drink it yeah. so bad. So we want to talk about this drink that we have um, here today. So we have a glorious um, mix of... It looks so pretty. <laughs> it it looks very, very it fancy. We have some Rocktown vodka. And Rocktown's been rocking my world. Yeah, true that. From Chata, uh, a little bit of vanilla. It smells so good. Flavoring. <laughs> this is our Ozark Howler. So I like it. Hmm. Okay. So from Chata, it has a very. Uh, I mean, I know there's like chocolate on the rim, which is amazing. The rum Chata has a very chocolatey flavor. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to chocolate milk. It is fucking good. Like, this might be the best drink that we've had. Next to the White River Monster, I'm telling you, because that one, the White River Monster, man, held my heart. This is another drink that I doubled the, um, no. I doubled the amount of vodka. Yeah. The aftertaste that I have from just the first drink is very nutty. Yeah. Oh god, here we go. And creamy and Oh no, really. <laughs> Can't talk for a minute because it's like I'm going through a plethora of flavors. Minus the teeth back. It's a journey. It is a it's a journey for sure on my tongue and drink. For those at color, I need everyone. You, me, you. Close your eyes. Okay. And I want you to picture over 15,000 square miles. I don't know what that looks like. Which is over a million acres. <laughs> a million acres of pine trees. We've got hickory oak trees with some dogwood and maple and red buds filling in. For I want you to imagine 300 miles of hiking trails over five humongous lakes, which are like the Beavers, Table Rock, Bull Shoals, um, Lake of the Ozarks, littered with um, naturally immaculate rivers like the Mulberry, White River, the White River, <laughs> the Buffalo, um, the Kings River, um, five officially designated wilderness areas. Mm. Mm. Um, caves, caverns, rock formations, bluffs, peaks exceeding 2,000 feet, touching parts of 16 counties just in the state of Arkansas. Wow. And spanning over five states, including Arkansas, Missouri, <clears throat> Oklahoma, Kansas, and Illinois. With all that being said, I mean, that's millions of acres of... Do I open my eyes? Yes, you can now, <laughs> um, as long as you pictured I did the Ozarks. Um, how can we positively say that there is nothing out there that... How can we positively say that we know for sure every creature that is out there that calls that place home? How can we positively say we know every single species? You can't. There's no way. So um, imagine camping out <clears throat> with your pals. You settle down, you know, you're hunkered down, you're happier than a salt on a river of whiskey. <laughs> okay. You got everything laid out. Um, you know, maybe you're recording for your YouTube channel. Maybe you're recording for your fucking Facebook or your Instagram. <laughs> and you're like, look at what we did. And then you happen to look up and you see two pair of glowing eyes staring right back at you, just in the, like, the, the darkness of the Ozark National Forest. Because when it's dark out there, I'm telling you what, it's fucking dark out there. <laughs> then I want you to imagine like a guttural, boorish growl. 
matching those glowing red eyes that you see. In like the sea of pitch blackness of the Ozark National Forest. And I'm going to tell you right then and there, you've just experienced the Ozark Howler. Yeah, that's not for me. The Ozark Howler is a uh, one of the Ozark legends that's mostly talked about compared to what we have been discussing. Um, it can be referred to as the Devil Cat, the Wampus, Cat Monster of the Mountains, or the Ozarks, or even the Hoo Hoo. Hoo-hoo. Which, there's something interesting about the hoo-hoo, which we'll talk about just briefly soon. Um, Does it have to do with Gurdon and the, whatever, International Order of the Hoo-hoo? When it comes to actually knowing what the creature is, no one seems to know. The descriptions seem to be all over the place. It's not just from locals, not the local hill folk. The Ozark Howler is described to be anywhere between three to six feet, which is to me is a drastic change. Of That's a different, a big difference when you're talking about like a, a like a dog size thing. Um, so I don't know where people are getting three to six feet. Is it length? Tall. Tall? Tall. Three to six feet. And to me, that's a, that's a huge difference. It's described to be a nocturnal quadruped. Is it quadruped? Quadruped. Which, all fours. Mm -hmm. It's never been seen to be just on two yeah. hind feet. Other than the 36 feet, um, this creature is described to have glowing forward-facing eyes. Which, obviously, in the dark, is very, if they're nocturnal animals, very dis distinctive. Because I've seen some glowing white eyes when lights shined on okay, them. Okay, yeah, that's my question. Are they glowing or is it the retina reflecting? What I'm getting off of what I'm reading is glowing red, like um, a, a source of energy behind no. the glowing red. <laughs> but something with glowing, like a bioluminescent... That's what I'm saying, like an energy behind it causing the glow, not just like a reflective light. I like thing. that. It concerns me. I'm questioning life. Mm. Yeah, bioluminescent eyeballs are... Unless we're underwater with a black light. Yeah. Right? Sure. Is that right? Or is a little dangler fish? Ang angler. <laughs> Dude, no, those things are fucking scary, but I danglers. love them. <laughs> but they have danglers. No, they do have little danglers and little <laughs> angler faces. Um, those are something of nightmares. And, like, I mean, that's what I picture the Ozark Howler with those red glowing eyes just in the middle of the woods. Because I've been in the middle of the woods at nighttime. Yeah. I don't want to see glowing eyes of any sort, but red. And these folks are camping too, right? So. Yes. They're camping or they're just locals that live within. So, like, you've been camping. You have a campfire, right? Your night vision goes out the window. It does. Immediately when you're, like, looking at If your eyes are not fire. adjusted and then you've been looking at fire, yeah. for sure, yes. So, it's three to six feet tall. Yes. Okay. Has four glowing forward-facing eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Canine-like teeth with tail and horns. Well, Not every depiction has horns, but from what I've seen, most of them do. Horns. Like we're talking a long tail, like a cat. Damn it, Drake Um. Okay, that's the thing. People are calling it a mutant cat. What kind of horns? From the hit. Like oh. devil horns. Devil horns? Okay, devil so not horns. like antlers, but like... Like... Devil horns. Forward facing oh. upward horns in the red region. Oh god. Not like tusks or anything like that. Like an elephant or, you know. But... And then you have this noise! Okay. So, it's been described as a, uh, a very, like, guttural, coarse reach growl that yeah, can be like anywhere a mixture of like an elk which we do have elk mm -hmm. in hyenas which we have coyotes which American mm -hmm. hyenas I mean it's like a scene of the Lion King of laughing hyenas I mean it, it sounds it's like creepy. so crazy and so creepy so if I'm hearing like a very coarse guttural growl 
my first thought is some sort of creature or demon. <laughs> demon. Demon. I mean, that's what I'm this. I'm thinking coyote or Black Panther. So, so many people don't believe that Black Panther the, the Black Panthers exist in Arkansas. No, they totally do. We've all heard stories of mountain lion sightings in Arkansas, and according to the state game and fish, 15 have been confirmed in the last 12 years. But what about a Black Panther? Five News reporter Joe Ellison takes us to Kibler, where a police chief there says he may have caught one on camera. And, and then he come in right, right in behind this tree. Kibler Police Chief Roger Green says back in November he was sitting in his blind when he was faced with something a bit unusual, at least for Arkansas. I've had all kinds of deer and, and squirrels and rabbits, big rabbits, and uh, this time it was a black panther. He took out his cell phone. I thought, I've got to get footage of this because there's so many people saying there's no black panthers in this area, and I even believed it myself until I saw it, and then I knew that that I, I really was witnessing something I'd heard about for years. Arkansas Game and Fish took a look at this video. Hmm. While they don't think it's a black panther, they do want to study the sighting. Definitely a black cat. Uh, what I'd like to do is go out and have a better look at it with some life-size cutouts uh, and say, okay, get a reference on size because that's one thing that I don't have with the video. Game and Fish uses science and studies to determine species when any sighting of animals are reported that are not native to Arkansas. N in North America, it's probably going to have to be a jaguar or a leopard from Central America or South America. Mm -hmm. That could have escaped from captivity. It could have traveled up through Central America. Who knows? In Kibler, covering news where you live, Joe Ellison, 5 News. They want to always chalk it up to like cougars, which no. the cougar population has died down. There is a cougar population. Population? Population. <laughs> People thoroughly believe there are panthers existing in those national forests. I believe it. They are. I believe it. I have not witnessed anything. <laughs> I have tried to manifest bears. I had childhood neighbors pets. that saw them. I'm just saying, and people nowadays have game cams. Yeah. And they have seen, not panthers, okay, but cougars for sure. Even yeah. though Game and Fish Commission has sworn up and down that we do not have a cougar population whatsoever. I like how you population. Say it. <laughs> just it's like not it. how I normally say it. I am just really struggling with my words. <laughs> population. Population. I'm really bored. no, but they're here and they make really terrifying sounds. If I have a school that has a mascot out of panthers, I'm sorry, but they're they panthers out there. They panthers out there and they sound like screaming women. They say cougars are the population of cougars are not existent in Arkansas. However, people's game trail cams prove differently. Mm -hmm. There is a cougar population. Population. <laughs> Population in Arkansas. Let's hope these lips move because. Population. How many cougars? They don't know. They say the population is dead. It not. It not dead. We do have wildcats in Arkansas. We may not have like a huge population. Good job. But we do have regions that have them. My mom had friends that had. Um, big ass wildcats as uh family pets no um i'm talking like like a mountain lion i mean that's what it looked like a mountain lion and bobcat i mean it was like a it looks like something from africa not a cheetah or anything like that but like was it like, an ocelot i it could have they have those on archer apparently they're i mean this thing, was, this thing was kept in a fucking garage as its own oh. fucking place and it was like it sounded like something out of Africa, like Okay, we talked about this in um, like the White River Monster, I know, but have you, uh, do you recall, have you even looked up what I even said about foxes? Um, and how they sound, because there's this video out there of this fox that like literally sounds like Well, we had a fox behind our house when we lived at Prairie Grove. Shut up. And, you well, have lived on the battlefield. Yeah. And, well, here's the deal. We never saw the fox, but we thought it was a dog. Like, the only thing I can describe, which is totally not realistic, is a but dog stuck in a bear trap. The closest thing to an, any animal is a dog. For sure. The screeching. Stuck in a bear trap. We like being tortured. The sound sounded like some sort of type of whatever animal other being tortured. Yeah. For sure. 
the vi what I saw was a clip of just a fox living in a house, just like, Wah! like freaking the fuck out because that's just the noise that they <laughs> make. Um, and foxes are beautiful. Is that one on your arm? Yeah. Why? Okay. Can I ask why? Because I've never asked you about your tattoos because I think it's rude. Uh, it should I be don't part know. of the conversation. I just have a really good tattoo artist, and he was like, who? <clears throat> Uh, let's let's promote right now. Jacob Sheffield. Where at? Uh, Elysium Studios in Grand Junction, Colorado. Check him out on Instagram. Oh. Art art by Jacob Sheffield, I think, and tattoos. But Super cool. Jacob no. Sheffield tattoos. In person, right here. It is absolutely beautiful and very detailed. I'm very impressed. It means nothing except it looks cool. Sweet. And that's okay. If I heard that in the middle of the Ozark National Forest when I'm hiking, I would legitimately be scared and I would turn around and I would be like, I'm out. I would pee my pants. Um, I don't like this so far. Okay. I'm kind of freaked out. Okay. With their forward facing eyes and their canine like teeth and their tail and their horns, they have a very muscular build that's very thick and stocky. Stocky is one of the only descriptions I can find of them that's very stocky and that's kind of weird because I think of a short football player, like a very, you're not short sure. Bitch. I'm <laughs> stocky as hell. Like a little baby cow. <laughs> and it's like these things are very scary and it's really, it's crazy because these descriptions aren't just from the local hills though, tucked away in the Ozarks. These are from like stories of people who are writing books and novels and poems even. By Jane Fields, there's Hum the Ozark Howler. And then there's also Billy Bob's Howler, which makes <laughs> me, does not sound right. I like and it. Every, I love it, but... Billy Bob's Howler. Yes, which is by um, a gentleman named Ross Malone. But then there is this gentleman I discovered named Eric R. Asher, who has a novel series uh, called The Mason Dixon Monster Hunter. He's got four books out. However, when you think about it, the um, Ozark Howler is an omen of death. For anyone who lays eyes upon them, has death in their future, which is slightly disturbing. Oh shit! Who, who doesn't? Children. Though? We all have death staring in our face, right? We all gonna die. So. But then we got this little fucking. Is it like mutant monster cat thing? Is it like a tomorrow us, so. thing? I mean, like it's it's within you at any given time. Opportunity presents yes. itself. <laughs> Fuck. It's like ravens or like black dogs. So no one, when it comes to being completely positive of what this is, no one knows really what it is. Um, they think that maybe a, a wild cat of some kind that we're just not aware of, a deformed wild cat. Inbred. Um, which, uh, we're saying it's Arkansas Mutant. and everything, but like, there are so many things out in the wild, like, yeah. I could see something getting tied up with something else that's like not normal. The earliest mentionings of the other color is, um, it's crazy because it's like the early 1800s up in Missouri with Daniel Boone. <laughs> I don't know oh. shit about Daniel Boone, but it was reported that Daniel Boone had fired a shot at the Ozark Haller, was never hit, it wasn't reported that anyone was hit, but that it was like just an event that had happened. And so, uh, for how prevalent I think Daniel Boone was in like the Ozarks. Um, it inspired a lot of people to write novels and stories and even share experiences that they personally had. It inspired Vance Randolph, my our boy, boy <laughs> um, oh my who was <laughs> raised in the Ozarks since the 1920s. He wrote a novel, or he wrote a book, um, o uh, Ozark Superstitions, in the 1940s, which he was able to interview people from the 1900s. Stories are being written about times previous to that, which involved people from that time, which they were able to interview. To me, that is huge in a sense that these days we don't, we don't even have anyone from like the 1920s or 30s to interview. I mean, it's um, for someone that works in the hospital system and the mortuary system, I see a lot of birth dates. And they're so, so much history has passed away. We have literally watched history die in front of us and we haven't, you know, asked questions, like questions that we need to ask, you know, and this gentleman, he, he did. And I believe that he got 
he interviewed people that were in such a a time that isn't talked about as much. The 1800s is something you do not hear often about. Especially people straight from that era. I don't, I don't even care if it's 1896 yeah. that you talk to him. Like oral history from that time period, yeah. Um, I think it's very important. And the fact that this gentleman got to um, makes my interest in it even, even there, personally. There have been some recent sightings. All the way up to, I want to say, 2015 and 2014. I read that Arkansas Game and Fish during the fall of 2014. They have a um, recorded emergency phone call they received. Um, stating that someone had nearly collided with an unidentified uh, male around 9.45. That... Um, led to possible dispatch of the area to investigate. There has also been um, photographs sent to the new local news channel of 4029. You know, the interesting thing about that is I have heard... Oh, the Howard, the Mueller? The Mueller. The most I've heard about yeah. within this area than anything else we've discussed. Yeah, but I didn't know what it was. They don't know if it's a cat. It, to me, the fact that it's like the stature of a bear but everyone's getting a cat-like thing off of it, and the fact that we have so many wildcats, it wouldn't surprise me that it's cat-like. Dude, it's a freaking panther. But they also say it's um, thick body, which means they don't feel it's a long-distance runner, but he's fast. It, it, he, she, whatever, they. is fast. There was a author. Um, Timothy Godwin. 1937 short story, The Hair of the Black Howler, gave the creature uh, time-traveling abilities. So, if this, mm. if this thing actually had time-traveling abilities, which, I mean, if you're into Doctor Who and whatever, I'm saying... Are we talking time-traveling or like a multi-dimensional mm. being? I think, I think multi-dimensional being. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like um, an alien. It's yes. a freaking alien. And that's what my conclusion comes to to the end of everything is like, you know, they think cat, they, I, they think a mutated, deformed wild cat of some kind that's just, you know, was inbred with something else out there. No, no, no. I, honestly, with what I've experienced in the Ozarks, personally, aliens. Yeah. Aliens? <laughs> yeah. Alien, c case closed. Aliens Done. or no more. Black Panthers. Okay, and I am gonna say one last time: Black Panthers are even cougars. Yeah. Black Panthers, legitimate thing here. Yeah. Arkansas. Yeah. Straight up. Game and fish can suck my dick. The fact that old locals and people that have lived in this area are still trying to carry on the legends that they have heard about, it's very believable that something is out there that we are not. There's more out there than we are aware of. We know what's blown people's minds that they've discovered, but what's beneath that, we don't know because no one's ever gone past that to me. No one's really gone deeper into it. And I think if we went deeper into it, we'd find more than what we expected to, personally. I don't have anything else. Hell yeah! I need another drink! <laughs> so, I, I would love to hear if anybody has stories about an encounter with the Ozark Howler. Um, if you are in the Ozark region and you have seen Black Panthers or any other large cat. Unexplainable large cat that you, you know, might think might be a cat. Yeah. Or weird bear cat thing. Bear cat. Yes. Bear cats. We want to hear about that. Bear cat of the Ozarks. Um, because this is another one where it is super strange. Is it a actual creature that we know of? Is it some sort of interdimensional alien creature. Yeah, there's a bunch of hill folk that don't know what the fuck is out there and they're just like thinking it's this yeah. or what. Yeah. Are we a bunch of hillbillies? <laughs> I mean, yes. But <laughs> let us know what you think. Uh, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more... Raising the roof. <laughs> Who remembers that? Get more of our Legends and Libations series and the other um, content that Ozark Researchers of the Beyond puts out. Mm. Um, if you this have so good. any legends, let us know, and we will see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye. Yeah.
So, hoo hoo. Hoo hoo. I don't know what you would. <laughs> I don't go around calling anything hoo hoo. Those are sacred bits. So that's yeah, cool. that's that's a secret. <laughs> it tastes so good, but it's like um, already wasted. So, um, and then I gotta tell my story. We should have done this earlier. Nah, it's it's more better when you're having a good time. 